Um, I'm traveling between here, um, the United States, and um, hopefully in 2018, um, be visiting Africa um, and hopefully going back to my motherland, Jamaica. So listen, I I'm going to need y'all to just stand up just for a little bit, just to stand. If you can't stand up, just think you're standing, all right? Okay, all right. So we're going to start. We're going to start over. I, I know we're in the house of the Lord, all right? And when we come to the house of the Lord, we want to give him our best gift, all right? Say with me, I have my best gift. Say that. I, I have my best gift. All right, the best gift you can always give the Lord, it doesn't cost you anything. It actually helps you to get in shape. It's a hand clap. So I want you to think of, whoa, 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 whoa now, whoa. I see some people ready. Oh, let's go. I want you to think about one of the greatest things that God has ever done for you. And I want you to think about it just for a second. And I want you to remember, if it had not been for God, you wouldn't have get up this morning. If it hadn't been for God, when the people are driving crazy on the highway, it still got you home safely. If it hadn't been for God, when all the hurricanes and all these things are happening in the U.S. and all over the Caribbean, all over the world, he kept you. So I want you to think just on his goodness, and I want you to give him the biggest round of applause that you can. Ready? Let's go! All week. Just get to, I ain't seen you all week. Hey, it's good to see you. Get him a high five, and then we're going to sit down, and we're going to get rocking and rolling. All right, I'm excited to be here. All right, all right, all right. If they didn't get the high five, just let them know. Listen, you know, you look much better in person than you do on the picture. You know what I'm talking about, right? All right. Well, my name is Andrew Guy, and it's a pleasure to be here. Um, it wouldn't be right if I don't just say thank God for everything that he has done. And I want to thank my mom just for not giving up on me, because if she did, I wouldn't be here today. Right. Above all, I want to thank all the mothers that are in here. I just came back from speaking at a women's conference um, a few weeks ago, and the place was just packed. And what I've learned is that um, if you want to get some serious things done, you got to get some ladies who are committed involved. Ladies, give yourself a round of applause. <laughs> ladies are involved in so many aspects of spreading the message of the kingdom. And it's so important that we make them feel valued. It's important that we just say, hey, listen, thank you for the little things that you do that go unnoticed. They need to hear that. And fellas, I'm not forgetting you, okay? Because behind every strong man, there is a strong woman, woman right? So the thing, the reason, my purpose for saying that is that we need to make sure that we're taking the time out to just to say thank you to the other person. Because if we don't say thank you, we're neglecting who they are, all right? Before I get into this message today, I want to talk a little bit about me. And I think it's important that you understand who is standing in front of you. And also, how great God is. I'm going to start off by how many Jamaicans we have in here. We have any Jamaicans here? So everybody in the back up. We are talking about Virgin. Damn, damn. I can tell. I heard, I heard a man back there. Yo, whoop, whoop, whoop. Hey, we're in the church. Calm down. Calm down. Calm down. You know, the, the Caucasian people in there, what, what exactly is going on? What, did, what is going on? What is going what, on? <laughs> they let you guys across the border again? Ha! We gotta cross that border. Anyway, uh, <laughs> but let me let me tell you a little bit about myself and um, the reason why I'm so passionate about the kingdom and about our function in life is because if it hadn't been for the grace of God, yes. where would we be? Yes. I'm gonna start off right there. Where would I be? I came to Canada in 1988, October the 30th, on a Sunday at 5.26 p.m. It was so cold, it was zero below Negro. You hear what I'm saying? I got off the plane and the block just disappeared. You get it? It was just cold. But leading up to that, leading up to that, I know you're laughing, but it wasn't always fun and jokes. It wasn't. Um, if you know anything about Jamaican family or living in Jamaica, 
you know, the people who visit the country know more about the country than the natives who live there. Can I get a witness? You know, they talk about, you never know, see the sun downs. It's nice over there. You'll see me say it real nice. You've never been there. Stop lying. <laughs> the tourists know more about the country than we do. And so, for me personally, you're looking at a guy that went to school one day a week. And you say, uh oh, how did it happen? Well, my mama had a dream. She wanted to do something for her six children. We, we were what you call poor. You know the people that are so poor that you couldn't afford the O and the R? You're just poor. You're just, you're just, you're just poor. And um, she used to sit at this little house and um, on this um, rocking chair. Not a rocking chair where you're sitting lazy boy. She worked this machine. It's a singer machine. You know the one with the big wheel. I know I hear grandma say, you want to do that? Oh, I remember that. So I'll be switching between. I have to make sure I translate, you know, for the people who are not um, native Jamaican speaking here. I have to translate. So you say, me say, me know that. I mean, I do understand. So, wonderful. So, um, you know, she used to sit at this machine every day and she would sew. And the way she sewed was to make these little bags so she can give my brother who'd walk like some 30, 40, 50 miles to see if somebody would want to buy the bag so we can put food on our table. It gets so tough sometimes that um, she would cry. And one of her favorite scriptures is like, I look onto the hills. Shama, what do you know on the Bible? What do I read? What do I read? Give yourself a clap, young man. Y'all read, man. Well, man. And so we're looking to see where help is coming from. Many times your help is not coming from man or the person next to you. It's coming directly from the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, right? So she would look and she would cry. And sometimes she would cry so hard that the tears would drop from her eyes and drop on me. By the way, I was really around three, about four years old at that time. And my job was to pass the material to her as she worked the machine, right? So, and as I pass the machine, you know, I'm just right there on her foot. And she's up there pedaling. And it got so bad sometimes that mama didn't have to say anything sometimes. All you would have to see is her eyes would close and she would shake her head and basically what was saying, when Lord, when? You ever had that when you're just praying for something for so long and it's just not coming through and you kept praying? Yeah, me, me, y'all are y'all sanctified people. You just pray and the Lord give it to you. Nah, nah, you probably don't understand what I'm talking about. But she was praying that the Lord would change her circumstance so she can help her children. And it just wasn't coming through. She kept praying, she kept praying. And how many people know that the real prayer is in your action? Yes. It's not about going on your knees and just praying or repeating a prayer. It's what you do after you pray. pray. Yes. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. So one day she decides to do something. You're gonna ask me, so what did she do? Go ahead. She decided she was going to go to Farin. How many people know what Farin is? So it's a far place that's far away from where you are. So she decided she was going to go to Canada. She had no money. My Jamaican people know red cent means nothing, right? You don't have a red cent. Right, right, exactly. My lady here knows what's going on. And um, one day she, I got up and it was about like 6 o'clock in the morning. I got up, she wasn't there. We're talking about a woman that I have sat at her feet, almost like a Mary Martha experience. And just all I see is her foot going up and down, working that machine. It's a singer machine. And you can just hear that machine, it's just singing. And it's making those little bags. My brother comes and gets the bag, walk. You probably won't see him until about six o'clock in the evening. He may sell two bags. At the same time, I still had what's called a father, right? I'm not talking about a daddy, I'm talking about a father. Because the father may donate, but they're not involved. You understand what I'm saying? Yes, yes, I see mama back there. Me know, yeah, talk about you know, they know what this. <laughs> that means, oh, they're of no use. They're of no use. I have to translate. So, uh, mama worked hard. 
she got up that morning, I don't know how she did it, but I got up and she wasn't there. And I hadn't seen her in 13 and a half years. Now, within that 13 and a half years, it was the toughest time of my life. She left us with some people who didn't believe that she could leave the island because, you know, when you say you're going to foreign, you know what your people are saying. How you going to get there? A joke, you yeah, man. Nobody in your family ever gone to foreign. Chow on a joke, a pipe dream. That means you're dreaming. <laughs> so when she left, God know how she did this. We had to stay with some of the family members who weren't willing to take us because it would be a burden, right? Yeah. It's like, what's in it for me? So we know that, oh no, the light went on. If she's going to foreign, yeah, but we keep them, but we keep them, but we keep them. That means something should be coming back for me. With that being said, we were abused, beaten every day. Instead of going to school, we were used to do chores. How many people know what weed in the yard is about? How many people know what toting water is about? How many people know what looking wood is all about? Now a five, six-year-old young man up in the bush in the mountain looking wood is some dangerous stuff with a machete, right? This was me. I know I was going to get a beating. And one day it got so bad that I went to look wood. And if you know, I'm from Jamaica, from the land of wood and? Water. And speed. You guys forget who's saying both. Land of wood and water and? Speed. speed. Good. Oh, Lord have mercy. Listen, land of wood and water and? Speed. All right, you're smart, you're smart, you're smart. So now, one of the day I was looking wood, and the pressure and the beating was so much. You know, I went up on the mountain, you know, to look the wood, because you know, Jamaica have all these trees and all this stuff, so you gotta look dry wood. And, and I looked down off the mountain, and then, you know, there was just rocks down there. And you know, I look, and the rocks look up at me, and the rock says, jump. I'm not gonna lie to you, I thought about it. Because I know what I was going back home to. And I realized that I can end it right now. I can end the pain. I can end the beating. I can end the abuse. I can end it right now. Maybe I should just jump. And then the voice says, I've got a plan. You're looking at the plan in motion right now. Give the Lord a praise. If I jump, I wouldn't be here today. If I jump, I wouldn't have two of the finest young men in the world today. If I jump, I wouldn't have a beautiful wife. If I jump, I wouldn't be writing books. If I jump, I wouldn't be impacting people in the schools. I became a certified science teacher, taught for eight years in Jacksonville, Florida. My students left from my classroom and went to score number one on their science portion of the Florida science test. You're not hearing what I'm saying. I don't think you get what I'm saying. I'm talking about the goodness of God. If anybody in here know about the goodness of God, give him a round of applause. You're looking at the plan in motion. You know when it gets so bad and you want to just end it. But the voice of the shepherd says, I've got to. What did he say? Many are the plans that's in a man's heart. I know most people are touching their chest. This is only a four-chambered pump. I'm going to explain that in a minute. It says, as a man thinketh in his heart. So his spiritual heart is up here. So is he. All right? And he said, I got a plan. And the plan was to transform the world through the anatomy of the kingdom and the power of community. Now, this is the latest book. The first one was Work Your Words. Work Your Words is special to me because 
you know, God gave us a few things. He gave us life, and then he gave us an earth suit. This is your body, because it's the temple. This is where he lives, right? How many people know what I'm talking about, right? So God lives in you. Does that make sense? But the words that we use every day, it affects this body. If you say I'm a no good, if you say I'm not going to make it, if you say maybe I should have jumped and ended it, you're programming yourself for destruction. You are programming yourself for failure. You're programming yourself to not give God the glory. You might as well be just like that servant who got one gift, one talent, and decided to bury it and do nothing with it. But when you work the right words, it don't give you good stuff. It doesn't give you better stuff. It doesn't give you the best stuff. It gives you the right stuff. You know, if you do good today, you can always do better tomorrow, right? And if you do better tomorrow, somebody's going to do the best, right? All those are what's called comparatives. But when you do right, I don't care if you're in Jamaica, I don't care if you're in China, I don't care if you're in Brazil, right is simply right. So I'm asking you, work the right words. Right? When God said, let there be, did darkness show up? God worked the right word, right? He said, let this mind be in you. He said, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. I can do all things. You see, you're believers, you know the word, but are you working the word? Your word, your word is almost like a job. It will reward you. It will pay you if you're working. But many of us, we're not working any words. And if we do work it, we're working the wrong words. Work your words. It will help you to find not everybody else, but your pathway to personal success. Personal is success has to be personal first. You can't watch me. You can't watch Counselor Anderson. You can't watch anybody else and say, yeah, 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 you know, I'm successful because I'm hanging around them. We grew up just down two doors from each other. I am at 157, 10 Eddie Stone. They say, can anything good come out of Jerusalem? Can anything good come out of Jaden Finch, by the way, back up? Jaden Finch is not a people. Jaden Finch is not an area. It's just a street. You want me to change history? I will get up and I put kingdom glory instead of Jane and Finch and tell me what happened. I just got to change the name on the street. And I'm asking you to change your mindset by starting to work the right words. Work what God says and see if. Just see. He said, try me now and see. He wants you to try it. But if you're working the wrong words, you can't be sorry for what you have in your life. Do you understand what I'm saying? After you work your words, you have to look at your body because God is a personal God, you know? Yes. He, he, he's a personal God. And he's no respecter of persons. When he made you, he said, let us make man. He spoke everything else. Let there be, let there be, let there be, let there be. And he said, wait, wait a minute. Whoa, 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 wait, wait. Let me pull up a chair. This one is special. I got to make this one. And he made you in his So. When you look at yourself, you're looking at God in motion. This book came about because I'm working on a doctorate. And while I'm in the cadaver room, the cadaver is when you work on bodies. So I'm dissecting the body. I don't want to gross anybody out. But this is called the sternum. Below the belly button is called the pubis area. So we cut the sternum all the way down and retract. Retract means to open up. So I open up this body. And everything inside the body didn't have a color. All I saw were compartments. So I'm starting to talk to God. I'm saying, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Wait a minute. I said, everyone looks the same inside here? He said, yeah. You say, all of these things come together to create a function? He said, yeah. I said, but what if something wrong with the heart in the left cavity of the chest? He said, that means something else is affected. So the anatomy of the kingdom, you are a kingdom. 
right? And you are the anatomy, right? And when you come together, you have power. Amen. Amen. You have power. The power is not in one individual. The power is in the community. Yes. No, let me back up. You know, most people said they're going to church. How many people go to church here? I need you to stop going to church. I need you to assemble. The body don't go to the body. Could you imagine if the heart get up and say, I'm going to the body? The heart, the lung, the kidney, everything inside assemble. Right? You know what scripture proved that? It said where two or three are gathered or assembled, where is he? He's in the midst. So if you just come to church, that's okay. You show up on Saturday, you got your, your little inoculation and you feel good. And you walk off like this. Praise the Lord. I feel so amazing. This is wonderful. <laughs> Did you see the way the Lord just worked it out? Whoa, let me go tell somebody. Whoa, and you run around and that's it. Like a fever. And it goes away. You want to assemble because the power is in the assemble. Amen. When you show up, you bring something to the body that the body did not have. Amen. Think of yourself as an organ in the body. Somebody is a brain, someone is a heart, someone is a leg. By the way, the leg makes things happen. Yes. They move stuff. Instead of sitting on a desk, work orders sitting on a, on a desk, that person picks it up and moves it. Mm -hmm. So you gotta find those people inside the body who are movers. They get things done. Yes. There are some people who have visionaries in the body. These are the guys that see things. You know, Pastor, you need to check this out. This is what's happening. They are visionary. They see these things. There's some guys, they just make the momentum keep going. They're the heart of the church. And when they don't show up, the church doesn't function. God doesn't care about the land.